and welcome to The Standpoint. If you're a follower of The Standpoint for the past 10 years plus, you know that March is a month for women. It's a women's month. I see if we need any excuse to celebrate women. Well, in the month of March, we celebrate women, all groups of women. And for some time now, there is this group of women that I think we're forgetting about them a bit. Sometimes we think that, oh, they did. Mm -hmm. They don't have any issues. They're not part of it. We, the professional women, women of power. By the way, 2019, that's our theme, women of power. But today we are going to celebrate some amazing wives of pastors. They are going to represent the many out there who are doing amazing work, who are, who are doing so well, who are toiling, who are keeping it all together. Inter uh, interestingly, International, Day, which fell, International Women's Day, which fell on the 8th of March, the theme was balance for better. They are balancing it all, the spiritual, the physical, the emotional, the whatever. They are keeping it all together and they still got swag. Hey, you should see them. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you wait, you will see something. Hey! The asa for mamis. Hey, hmm. you think say in your break? Hallelujah, somebody. <laughs> anyway, welcome to the standpoint today. We are celebrating the pastor's wife, and I have with me in the studio three amazing from three different, you know, denominations, and uh, we are going to have a wonderful discussion. Let me say thank you to GTP for my cloth. My dress is by Ophelia Crossland Designers. Always thank you so much to them. Thank you to Ayers Boutique Online for my shoes. My makeup product, always by Papa Cosmetics. It's been eight years and going, and we are so grateful to them. My makeup, beautifully applied by Nax Beauty Studio. Yeah, the new kit on the block. They are our new makeup artist, and we are so grateful to them as well. We take a break. When we come back, we meet the three different generations and denominations of Asafo Mami. Do you even know the difference between Osafo Mami and Asafo Mami? I'll tell you. We'll be back. When cleaning your vehicle by valeting, steaming, waxing, or polishing, make sure the engine is also sound. Servicing your vehicle with gold synthetic oil and any quality goil oil massages the engine, removes deposit, protects it from wear and tear for longer lasting performance and makes your vehicle fuel pumped. Made for diesel and super engines. Remember, after every 15,000 kilometers of enjoying your ride, service your engine with gold synthetic oil. You are a champion. That's why I, Azuma Nelson, three times world boxing champion and a patriot, always. Choose Goel. Ashini Pankasa. Goel. Good energy. New at Depa Dumas from GTP. The name we know and trust. Premium quality fabrics with a smoother feel. New designs and richer colors. New at Depa Dumas. For the woman who knows her worth. GTP. Quality fabrics printed in Ghana. GTP. Timeless. Welcome back to the stand fine. Today we are celebrating Asafo Mames. Yes, wives of, wives of pastors. So our topic is the pastor's wife. We have all sorts of perceptions about them. But interestingly, you know, Throughout my growing up, I've seen three generations of pastors. Pastors' wives, forgive me. I've seen those who were like, I mean, cool. I mean, sitting at the back where they are slate and kaba and, you know, frying both fruit sometimes, <laughs> said everything. You know, that's like that. Then I saw a generation where they were worshipped when not of mommy's coming, as of mommy's coming. Hey, you know, ushering and, you know, kind of thing. Then I've seen this current generation where they want to be in the midst of things, in the lives of the young people, become their role models, help, you know, get their hands dirty 
by getting involved with them, organizing programs with them, you know, getting the youth to understand what life is all about. So I want to find out, today's Asafu Mami, the pastor's wife of today, what's her life like? What are her dreams? What are her aspirations? What are her beliefs when it comes to women empowerment in general? That's what this program is all about. How do they find balance? The spiritual, the physical, the professional, the emotional, the concerns, everything, <laughs> you know, the eyes. <laughs> How do they deal with it? That's what we are going to find out. But let me say thank you to GTP, who are our main sponsor. And GTP said, our style is ageless. Our patterns, limitless. And designs are endless. Our beauty never fades. GTP, timeless. Welcome back to The Standpoint. And seated on my set right next to me, I have Lady Evelyn Jibodi Paha. She is the first lady and uh, president of the Precious Vessels of Virtue of ICGC Discovery Temple at Kaswa. Welcome to The Standpoint. Thank you. Now, next to her, I have Lady Pastor Precious Amma Ajekum. She is a lady pastor herself of World Christian Tower Ministries and is also married to Pastor Ajekum, who is the head pastor of World Christian Tower Ministries. Lady Precious, welcome to the stand for you. You know, I, just, I, just, I just love her. She's an amazing, and um, she operates in the prophetic as well. She didn't ask me to say, but me, I know, so I've added it. In the prophetic as well, so, you know. So she's an amazing, you know. So sometimes when I'm going close to her, then she will see, you know. So, you know, right. Next to her, I have Auntie Doris, Mrs. Doris, and Kama Asamoa. She is a marriage counselor. She is an HR director at a company. And a Presbyterian, she is from the Presbyterian Church of Ghana and a Crow Ridge Church. She is with the youth, she is the youth minister's wife. Yes, the youth minister's wife. So she still has the youthness in, 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 in her. She can't run away from it. Welcome to the standpoint, Auntie Doris. Thank you. <laughs> now, let me start with you, Lady Precious. What's your background? My background, mm. okay, I really grew in a Christian home. Okay. If I say Christian home, I mean, I grew up in Sunday school <laughs> where dad and mom are Pentecostals and, you know, you're always supposed to be in church, <laughs> you know, always, you know, kind of forced to obey Christians, I mean, Christian rules mm. and that kind of thing. So, yes, I grew in a Christian home and, I mean, I grew from Sunday school, and that's, I mean... That's but you were going because you had to go. <laughs> well... Those days, I, you were going to the Sunday school because <laughs> mom and dad said you have to go, you had to go. No, let me say, no. I mean, we grew to, to, to love church. I okay. mean, because I quite remember that um, I had developed that, you know, strong passion for church, so much so that I would even run away from my, 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 my roles at home, yeah. And uh, the next moment you see me in church, and I'll be at the first seat. So I quite remember, you know, I used to do that, and my mom would be chasing me here and there, and would be angry with me that, yes, if you want to go to church, why don't you finish with your rules at home before you go? And I didn't really understand that because I, I don't want to be late. Yeah. So you wanted have to, to church first. I have to. I, I really first. want to be at the first seat. So if, let's say, I have to cook, I don't mind. Once time is up for service, you stop. I will just, I, I wouldn't cook. So, you know, it was really a problem. Try <laughs> Stop off for Christ. <laughs> yeah. So. But did, did you ever think of, uh, about um, ever marrying a pastor or becoming a pastor's wife? No, that was not really a thought. I mean, all that I knew was that I love church. Yes, I love church. I mean, I always want to be at church. I always want to be 
I always want to participate in activities in church. I'll go for national, uh, you know, quizzes and all that. But I didn't really have any desire for marrying a pastor. Okay. That was then. But yes, I mean, growing up, because we were trained in the things of God, I mean, of God, we grew up to understand that mm. in choosing a marriage, a, a partner for marriage, you have to seek for God's direction. Mm. And so when I was growing up, you know, hitting the age of marriage, let's say yes, because I told myself I want to marry 25 years. Okay. And I, I was always saying it. Yes, so I started praying about it. And yes, I can really testify that um, prayer works. Yes, because I specifically prayed in direction towards my marriage. And I, I got, I mean, I got the clear um, vision, okay? okay. <laughs> Let me flow. I got, I got a clear vision that that's the area that God wants me to go. Right. So I had that, you know, that clear Now, vision. somebody told me that from school days, you've always been this fashionista. The way you dress and, you know, you're kind of <laughs> always on point and all that. So they were surprised that you married a pastor. Didn't anybody <laughs> say that? So you, with your kind of dressing and, you know... <laughs> Which pastor will marry? Did you get that? Anyway, I think it's 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 it's, 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 um, it's nice to be nice. Yeah. Yes, it's nice to be nice. Yeah. So, well, they were surprised, mm -hmm. and all that. And what really made it so surprising was the kind of man that, that you might I marry. <laughs> a very cool guy. I mean, let me say guy. Yeah. <laughs> Cool he's a guy. He's Sorry. a guy. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. he's a guy. Mm -hmm. Who didn't like? He finds it so difficult to even talk. So they were surprised. They thought maybe it should be, you know, mm -hmm. like an some old uh -huh. doesn't know. You where know, some himself to yeah. exactly, yeah. you know. So that's it. I mean, but they don't. I'm know just being real that to myself. That behind the scenes, also <laughs> for himself, he's got his own style. I'm telling you. I know, like. you know. You know what? When 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 people go like. You are hot or something, then I just say, I mean, I just say in my mind, you don't know. You know, my husband is cool mm. on the outside, but he's very hot. Hey, hey this guy, <laughs> he's really hot, eh? <laughs> but you know when people see me, and <laughs> I mean, let's say, yes, I'm in a gold hair, yeah. they go like, hey, how can I suffer, mommy? But my husband likes it. He really admires it. So why won't I do it for him? Yeah. You know, yeah. I have to. I have to. That society, we yeah. so we, we we don't give you the cloth, mm. your own cloth, <laughs> but we cut the party exactly. for you. Okay, check. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> you, you 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 are in the next, still in the nursing school. Medical school. Medical school. Medical school. Yay! <laughs> Congratulations. You. But you are a nurse. No, no, you've you've. Yeah. You are going to upgrade to a medical school. Great, yeah. And um, how's it like being married to a pastor? <laughs> ICGC. Um, well, first of all, I'll say thank you for the opportunity. Being married to a pastor is it's a blessing. Mm. Um, many times, I will personally say, it's something that, you know, if you are not into it, mm. you really you know, from the outside, you see a lot of um, prescriptions or descriptions of who a pastor's wife should be. And oftentimes, you may actually be pushed off. Mm. You don't want to buy the idea yeah. or buy into the idea of becoming mm. a pastor's wife. But I want to believe, and I do believe, that being a pastor's wife is as much a calling as it is for being a pastor. Mm. You know, because I personally <laughs> did not want to marry who I'm married to now because of the fact that he's a pastor. pastor. Yes. And it's, it has nothing to do with who the personality was or how he is, how he looks or anything. But the mere fact that he was a pastor, he was a pastor, <laughs> whether I loved him or not, I just was put off. You can't conform to that kind exactly. of lifestyle. Exactly. <laughs> You know, because there's so much, growing up, I view the pastor's wife as there is this restriction. Mm. 
and uh, you don't have to do this. You don't have to do that. You have to look this kind of way and stuff like that. And one of the things that really was um, something I thought about a lot was if I marry this person, it's going to change my personality because I have a personality of my own. And I didn't want to enter into this marriage and then become somebody else. I didn't want to dress up because this is what people want me to dress like. Mm. Or you have to look this way or you have to talk this way. I still want to be Evelyn. Mm. And I don't want to change no, no, that. No, you want to go. You wanted to be Jig body. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> exactly. So it was, it was tough. It was a tough decision. But like she said, prayer does wonderful things. I, I had a an agreement with God that whoever he chooses for me, I'm just going to go with it. No matter what I think of the person or what I, how I see the person now, I want to believe that he's my father and he wouldn't choose anything bad for me. Yes. So How long have you been married now? This September will be five years. Five years? Yes. Any precious how long? A decade. A decade. Ten years. <laughs> I think I'm the youngest. <laughs> <laughs> hey! Mrs. Ankara Sabo, how long have you been married? 27 years. <laughs> for how long? I suffer for mommy for about um, six years. Six years? Yes, about six years. But did you know your husband was going to go into ministry? No. And um, <laughs> the funny thing was when we were courting, I told him that there are three professions that <laughs> I do not want him ever to think about. One was a doctor. Uh -huh. The second was an osofu, uh -huh. a reverend minister. Uh -huh. And the third was um, a military man. <laughs> um, the military, because that time there were coups and all this. Mm -hmm. But for the other two, I was saying that always people, especially women, mm. are knocking on your doors yeah. and asking for help. And I don't want to share him with anyone. So I told him that. Um, that was how many years ago? We got it for about seven years. So that's about 34, 35 you years. For seven years? Yes. Before you got married? Yes, before we did get married. And um, so I told him that. And um, down the line, um, I was so ready for him to become a sofu and for the Presbyterians. What changed? What changed was that um, I think that I, I sort of had this call myself. I, I liked talking, teaching, preaching. And um, so it, it, was, it just came naturally to me yeah. after a while. Let me take a break and come back because unlike these two who married and or, 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 or suffers, um, the men who were, re they were already or suffers, or Reverend Minister Pastor before you marry them. You know, you married a man of God. He, he was a Christian and everything before he became, a, 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 you know, a, a Reverend Minister. Maybe you say, a lay, how do you call it? A tent minister. A tent minister. Oh, my father was a Presbyterian, no. and my husband is born a Presbyterian. I should know these things, <laughs> but I'm a Baptist. <laughs> we'll be back. <laughs> Water gives life. Water is life. Enjoy the pure, refreshing taste of awake, purified drinking water, which comes in a uniquely designed bottle with a lemon green tap. Water is your perfect way to stay hydrated. And remember, for every bottle you buy, an amount will be donated to the National Covid Thoracic Centre, Ghana. Awake, purified drinking water. One for life. For bulk purchase, contact 
So let me come to you. Anyway, I'm too much in a hurry. Let me say thank you to our supporters. <laughs> Casa Preco, our way purified water. Thank you so much to you for your support and your sponsorship. Thank you to Royal Drinks. House of Food, Auntie Vera, you know I love you, right? Cake Technique, thank you so much. Today, the cake. Mm. Thank you to Gogot Yogurt, as a woman, I always say it. Yogurt is very good for you. And Gogot Yogurt is made here in Ghana. Thank you to Yak Cleaning Services, who keep our environment clean. We are so grateful to them. So, Lady Precious and Lady Evelyn, you walked in, mm, Ghani Ghani, <laughs> you knew that the man was so soft when you went in there. But... Let me ask you, Lady Precious, is being married to a pastor different from being married to, say, an ordinary man? Yes. Okay, just to um, say this first, I actually did marry my husband when he was a pastor. Oh, he wasn't a pastor? Yes, he wasn't a pastor. Okay. He was a prayer warrior. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So if I say that I mean he was effective... <laughs> In the activities of the church. You know why we laugh? <laughs> prayer warrior is why the man should be praying 24 <laughs> 7. How did he get the eyes to see you? Really? Okay, so you just reminded me of something. You know, I remember anytime I, I mean, when we're caught in, when I go to visit him, we'll just be, I mean, at the hall chatting and we'll say, dear, you can call you can call <laughs> and then who we can pray? I suppose I was like, ah. So when they said no, I have to really voice out. I was like, ah, anytime we come, we go to the park to pray. <laughs> Sometimes, don't you think we need time to really talk about, you know, the future and all that? And then he said, you don't know. Sometimes when you come and I look at your beauty, if you know the chemistry that goes inside of me, <laughs> the best option is for us to go out there <laughs> to the park to pray. <laughs> A wise man, you know, it's a flee from evil, <laughs> flee no right. flee from temptation. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> yes, so yes, being married to a pastor is different from uh, getting married to an ordinary man because um, there are a lot of responsibilities in ministry, a whole lot, you know. Uh, Mommy just said something that there's a lot on the table now. Yeah. A lot. So you have to be ready to face the pressure mm. because you can't really run away from it. So yes, you face your personal pressures and then that of the ministry. Mm. And also the I mean the members. I mean yes the members. So yes, obviously it's different. I would say that the, the workload brings a difference. But how do, you, uh, uh, how do you deal with the midnight calls? <laughs> <laughs> to pastor. Midnight calls. Mm. Well, People call him pastor. To be honest help. with you. <laughs> I just sleep. I mean, Are why? You, sure? you just of sleep. Course. It doesn't bother you. <laughs> no. The issue is, um, if you want to concentrate on why he's, you know, having calls here and there, every now and then his phone is ringing. The first thing is you have to understand who you're married to, okay? And you know that, like she said, lots of people have their lives wrapped around this man of God because he's supposed to be their shepherd, sort of. So if somebody who is a sheep finds that, oh, I need my shepherd at this time, you can't restrict, you can't really control what happens in the life of the congregation. Mm. You get me? So at one point in time, by all means, somebody will call him. And but he's a husband first. Yes, he is. Before, you know, the... the, the exactly. Shepherd. Biblically, yeah. you are the helpmate. Okay. So you stand at the position of helping him or meeting him where the help is required. Okay. So when you are performing that role, you don't necessarily have to forget that you are also a person. God, the same God that called him, called you also, gave you a purpose. Mm -hmm. And you are supposed to achieve that purpose as well. But you see, if I want to concentrate on how he's receiving calls, because he's achieving his purpose, mm -hmm. what about me? I need to have my rest for tomorrow because I have a purpose to achieve. Mm -hmm. And if he's receiving his call, he's <laughs> following his, he's his, his, his achieving his purpose, I mean, doing what he's supposed to be doing. 
That is his part. When it's time for me and him, we have that time. Okay, but I don't worry myself about but why this call. But you make that conscious effort to have that time as husband and wife. Of course. Because if you don't, then <laughs> there's going to be trouble. Yes, because even the, the, the Lord says, the family first. Mm. That is how it is with God. Mm. You can't have a bad home. Your wife is not happy. And then you are out there preaching you know, it doesn't work like that. God needs to know that your wife is happy, the family is happy, the children are kept. I mean, the first congregation is your family mm. before you go out there. But Lady Evelyn, this is the standpoint, you know. Let's, yeah. let's be here. Yeah, let's put the cat on the table. <laughs> He's a man yeah. before of God. Yes. And you know that there are sisters out there who make pastors their targets. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> who make pastors their target and will find every way possible, mm -hmm. you know, especially if you are not from the particular church and they marry you into that yeah. church. That one is worse. I have a daughter in, you know, a little sister in Tak Takradi. She was married to another church. She suffered, <laughs> you know, by a pastor. You know, that's a, another story for another time. I think I need to do programs with those. Well, that's not you know, so wise. far from my story because you, you I wasn't an ICGC, you How? know. Yeah, person. and then they married you exactly. So, Pastor <laughs> Plahad, the Plahad didn't see any woman in ICGC and get to my you, they married from which church? I, I wow, my story is is, is is something else because my mom was uh, brought up a Presbyterian, okay, but along the line, she got married to a Jamaican, okay, so he's a Rastafarian and they observed the Sabbath, yeah. So, for me, like I said, I wasn't in the church type of yeah but i grew up but you knew knowing God. yes exactly because he made sure that you we knew god you. yeah the others don't really know what you've gone through to yeah. get to where you are they just see you oh this lady is fortunate she's hey, she's married to the pastor where did he meet her and stuff like that but you know the issue is it's not easy for anybody everybody just wants to see you are glorious they don't understand the process. Yeah, the process. There was a time, actually, something happened. I can't really remember what happened. And I was really, really, you know, out of myself. And so I remember we were driving home, and I told him that, you know what, I think that you put in way too much, you know. Pressure would be. Not pressure necessarily, but it's like you're expecting too much of me. Okay, I want you to understand that in as much as I'm your wife, I'm helping you to pastor the church and then do whatever you want to do. I'm also a church member. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> I also. <Yes. laughs> I'm also. <laughs> you see, I'm also a church member. I also require that mentoring you give to the other church members. I do because I don't know it all. Lady Pressure, does it sound familiar? Um, yes. Um, I mean, with the issue with calls, like not too long ago, someone called like 2 o'clock. Not for any... 2 a.m. 2 a.m., my dear. Not for any good reason. So we saw the call come, I mean, coming in. My husband was like, ah, dear, who is this? I was like, ah, okay, maybe it could be an emergency. So he paid it, and then the lady said, oh, pastor, oh, pastor, um, I was actually, I was deeply asleep. And when I woke up, I just felt like calling you. I really like your reaction. <laughs> <laughs> so you really have to understand this. Mm -hmm. So Pastor was like, wow. You just felt a deep, you know, like you just felt within you. Mm -hmm. Like she call, call me for what? To him. So he just gave it to him. Look, next time, don't call me this time. Straightforward. And I really applauded for him. Mm -hmm. It's not because I'm a jealous wife. No. no. Sometimes. Right thing has to exactly. be Exactly. You know, so for us in ministry, we try to train our, our members to be self. So yes, it's, if you feel headache, you yeah. need to exercise the faith that is in you. Yeah. Because we've been trained to understand that Papa, who is a pastor, my husband, I mean, trains us to be self-dependent. So that, I mean, when you are facing a challenge, at a point, what if you call pastor and pastor's phone? Is off. What do you do then? Does it mean you die? 
You <laughs> know, so we have to train the members yeah, to come to believe that they also have a power in them. Yeah. Greater is he who is in them than he who is in the world. Yeah. You know, so yeah. that a member will come with a testimony to say that I had an attack. My baby was dying. But I cried unto Lord. God. And he or she came alive. And that becomes a living testimony. Yeah. But not to say that my baby was dying. So I, I, I was pastor. actually calling for pastor. My pastor's phone was off. I called mommy's phone to mommy's phone was off. In that case, they will say you are wicked, right? Yeah. Because why did you put you off your off phone? phone? Yeah, as a pastor. But anything can happen. Maybe we want to enjoy ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> So we have to put on our phone. Yeah. So there are nothing like a flash even comes. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> you don't have to do it. I'm listening to them and it's like they are telling my own story as well. <laughs> no, I'm not married to a pastor, but I'm married to a chief. <laughs> so, how, how have you coped all these years? Oh, um, we encourage them to preach from the pulpit on some of these things so that the church members know that their family is very important to them. Um, and it's the women who are usually the trouble. I it's not know. the men. It's the women. And now my buyer say, my child is sick and my husband is beating me. And the men are here. The men are smiling. <laughs> and the husbands are beating them. Okay. Usually it's the women. And since we also are in the women's ministry and we are women's fellowship, when we go for meetings, when such discussions and things come up, in a subtle way, let them know that your husband too needs what? He needs you and you also need your yeah. husband. So all those are points in which, so from the pulpit, then to you, to the women, to the youth. My husband is a youth minister and um, sometimes they have all these problems and, his, and challenges. You have a lot of challenges nowadays. Yeah. And, and you need to also coach them, mentor them, so that they know that, yes, they need your husband, but your husband also needs, needs you, you. And you and need, you need yes. your husband. So there are, there are different platforms that you can address this, from the top, which is the pulpit, that when you come down, you can disseminate this information for us all to understand. That is, it's, it's, it's burdensome sometimes. It's burdensome because sometimes they wake up so early, have to go and do what? Unveiling two stones are what? At, at some five o'clock and then you are waking up at two o'clock. So we, we need to just let them know mm -hmm. in very nice, wrapped nicely, mm -hmm. but present it to them mm -hmm. so that they come to appreciate mm -hmm. our situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Quickly, do you believe in women empowerment? Yeah, sure. Do you believe in women? I do. I really do. Okay. Let me say thank you once again to GTP, who are our main sponsor. And please sponsor the standpoint, okay? Please sponsor us. We need sponsorship. I beg you. Do you want us to go off air? Please sponsor us, okay? Well, GTP says our style is ageless. Our patterns are limitless. And designs are endless. Our beauty never fades. GTP, timeless. Like a good married. It's, it's timeless. Well, let me say thank you to GTP once again for my cloth. Of, this is GTP Adipa Dumas. This is Adipa Dumas. Good quality. Very good quality. You know, if you ever lived with your grandmother and you touch her Dumas, <laughs> you'll see something. Yeah. Well, say thank you to Ophelia Crossline Designs for making the dress for me. My shoe today, beautiful suede shoe by IS Boutique Online. I'm so grateful to her. Makeup products by Papa Cosmetics, as always. And then, of course, applied by Nax Beauty Studio. I am also so grateful to them. All the wigs I wear today, I'm not wearing, I'm just having my hair on. You know, my wigs I wear by Chriselle, Chriselle Beauty Salon and Spa. They are at East Ligon. You know, get in touch with them. And then, you know, I went to a my girls. I'm a moga, you know. And uh, we are celebrating our 60th anniversary next year. And my year group, the 89 year group, we are sponsoring the speech day. And the project we are undertaking, he needs money, plenty. So we have put together this cookbook. Moga 89 Delights. Moga 89. And our favorite recipes from Ghana and around the world. It's all over. I mean, if you need one, it's just 150 Ghana cities. 
150 and you buy it, you get a good book and then you support a good cause. So I beg you, patronize it. Eh? I'll be coming to you to come and sell it so we get money to do. You never know, your daughter or your granddaughter will go to Vanzuman Girls. It's a very good school. I went there. So please, this is our book out there. If you see anybody come to you with it, please, please buy a copy. You know, it's 150. If you're nice to me, I'll give it to you for 120. Or if you give me 200, too, I'll take it. We we'll take a break. We'll be back. When cleaning your vehicle by valeting, steaming, waxing, or polishing, make sure the engine is also sound. Servicing your vehicle with gold synthetic oil and any quality gold oil massages the engine, removes deposit, protects it from wear and tear for longer lasting performance and makes your vehicle fuel pumped. Made for diesel and super engines. Remember, after every 15,000 kilometers of enjoying your ride, service your engine with gold synthetic oil. Well, you're a champion. That's why I, Azuma Nelson, three times world boxing champion and a patriot, always. Choose Goel. Ashini Pankasa. Goel. Good energy. Okay, welcome back to the standpoint. Having a very insightful conversation with Asafo Mames from different backgrounds, married for different years, different generations. Auntie Darius. After 26, uh, 27 years of marriage, mm -hmm. do you still enjoy sex and do things oh, yes, um, in the bedroom, like styles and stuff? Seriously, seriously, <laughs> seriously. Um, my husband and I have a lesson six, which we call good sex. Okay. It's not just sex, because sex... All the hens and the goats have sex. Mm. But as human beings, you should enjoy sex. So we teach it in designs, and sometimes we have to take people to their bedrooms to teach them. Not that we do it for them to see, no. but to <laughs> train them. Because some of them, you do their theory and all that. So we, we do. And sometimes um, we, we, we have different styles. Even in our old age, when we buy any new car, we have to perform a style. Hallelujah! For that, so we have Grand Vitara. Hey! For the Explorer. Hey! Any new car that comes. <laughs> and, and the styles are different. So, so I want to tell you that. I vow! I vow! <laughs> I vow! Age is here. Yeah. But you know, sometimes. The ladies, as we grow, we do exercise and there are all these gyny challenges and so all that. But if God gives you good health, mm -hmm. then you have to enjoy all those things and do it well. Do everything as unto the Lord. And that is one of my... <laughs> so everything you do, do well as unto the Lord. So it's very important. It is very important as a, as an, as a fumami. If you satisfy your husband well on that I said, what about you, yourself that's why you yeah. yourself. oh i mean by all means uh, by all means why should you cheat yourself anyway <laughs> so i uh, but i'm saying that when you make him happy and he goes out there you see some vim mm. uh, some vim and then all there you ask them something about the other yeah. you don't care about them because you know you are doing your homework very well Boria Kalamakasata. Prophetess, do you sometimes get into the prophetic <laughs> in the middle of the art? Nanya me you be beatro. Nami you come in. Seriously, what? Yes, but it's really see. When I've I've really reached the I'm in the third heavens. <laughs> you can't see anything. No. You can't see anything. <laughs> yeah, so you were, you were asking if I do prophetic in the bedroom. Yeah, something. yeah. You know, <laughs> what was actually coming, I was like, these members, they don't know what we do. <laughs> they don't know how wild we can go. <laughs> you know, they see us preaching, jumping around, yes, doing the prophetic and all that. I think we take that same spirit to the house. No, because... 
in the house or at home, it's a different thing altogether, mm. you know. So, yes, if we, we, we're planning or we've planned to have good sex. Mm. Yes, we go just raw. Mm -hmm. It's nothing like being careful or being spiritual or being whatever or seeing through the spirit. Ah, can you just imagine? You don't pray before. <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> I can't really imagine, you I'm, know, having a good I'm time. And then, you. and then my husband told me that, dear, 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 wait, 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 wait. I see. In fact, in case you see your case, you see your case, you see your case, and you see, you know, I'm sure, yeah. Oh, yes, see. And you see. And you see. You know, yes, you, know but, but, you know, honestly, this thing is really, really um, vital. Yeah. You know, and you know, there are some other pastors too, who really bring ministry home. Yes, yes. That's they why I asked that question, home. yeah. So when they come home, they, they sit with their Bible. Mm. And they stay deep into the night, reading, 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 and all that. You know, we deal with cases. You know, as Mommy was saying, I mean, people, yes, hang on you. And I mean, they come to you to talk to you and all that. And I go like, no, it's wrong. It's wrong. No, but fine, you've done all the spiritual thing, things at church. No more be fake. The later time that you have for yourself, you are with the Bible again. I mean, no. You know, it's happening, and most of us of mummies are not happy. Yeah. The reality. Yeah. yeah. You know, mommy was saying that, you know, when you, you satisfy a man, you see that tenacity in him. Mm. I mean, you see that this is a man who is satisfied. Mm. The same way if you satisfy a woman, whatsoever role that she plays, you see that strength. You see that, you know, completeness in her. You know, so quick is good. Mm. Pastor's wife, do that. It's good. <laughs> Yeah, it's really good. Praise be unto you <laughs> and unto your household. <laughs> now, in conclusion, Evelyn, Lady Evelyn, let me ask you, what do you hope to achieve? What kind of impact do you hope to make with your role as a pastor's wife? Finding myself where I am now, I try to make sure that the things that I wish I knew at certain ages, I try to make sure that those young ones that are in those ages get to know those stuff or get to do those things so that they don't have to be my age and say, I wish, yeah. you know. So I actually have... You want to mentor? Yes. I actually have a, a, um, a group, so to say. It's Ladies After God's Heart. Yeah. And um, we... The ones I, who did the cooking competition. <laughs> That's actually the entire PVV, Precious okay. Vessels of Virtue. Okay. But this is just a site, you know, where I have young ladies of all kinds of ages. Um, I sometimes hold a mini conference for them. We have a WhatsApp platform where we are in communication all the time. We have different activities we do. It's not just about prayer and, uh, you know, you have to talk about lifestyle, like how to dress up as a lady, a whole lot of, of things. And... I'm hoping to uh, be able to at least, <laughs> if nothing at all, get somebody to appreciate that, okay, being in this, you know, woman's environment has given me this mindset. And then I always tell them that, like, you know, I mean, if I need to tell a woman that get yourself upgraded, I need to. Upgrade, upgrade yourself. myself. Exactly. I mean, because I need to preach what <laughs> I need to live what I'm preaching. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then sometimes too, you don't necessarily have to mentor a person by telling the person that do this, do that, do that. But the person just sees what you're doing, doing, and then the person follows. You know. So that's oh what I've I've been doing Thank so you far. So much. Thank you. Now, Lady Precious, First Lady. Of World Christian Tower Ministries. What do you have to say to that young lady out there praying, praying? And there's nothing wrong with making it your focus that I would, when I grow up, I want to marry a pastor. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. But that young lady out there admiring you, thinking that Lady Precious, hey, I see her, her jeans, her shoes. You know, I want to marry a pastor, this, that. What advice do you have for such a person? Mm -hmm. Yes, um, I would say that your expectations is also very important. You know, why do you want to marry a pastor? Why do you want to marry a pastor? What are you expecting? You know, you should know the reason why you want to marry a pastor. Otherwise, we best see a woman I tell you, fast. You know, and you, you <laughs> didn't even look back to yeah. go for it. 
And that is what has happened to a lot of people. So as we're saying, I mean, I, we've, we've put a few you know, ideas together here. It tells you that it's, 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 it's quite of a calling. Mm. If your desire is channeled alongside the will of God concerning your destiny to be married to a pastor, then I would say you've got it right. Mm. And finally, Auntie Darius. I think we touch on a few things that there are some pastors white who are struggling, really struggling, and happy in there. So, uh, you know, unfortunately, maybe having affairs or, you know, into all sorts of things just to keep themselves happy. What advice have you got? Sometimes some of them, they have nothing to do. You know, they are just full time. And some of the pastors will tell you, I don't want you to work. Just be home. And pray and support, you know. What advice do you have? Um, I would encourage such spouses to have, like, usually most churches have groups, women groups. Find something doing. Empower yourself. Even if your husband says, I don't want you to do this, I don't want you to work, there's the internet at home or on our phones. Empower yourself. And just once in a while, your women's group, tell them I want to treat this with you. Mm. Like vessels, precious vessels. Yeah. I've talked to or your virtue. group of virtue. I've yeah. talked to your group at Bubuashi before. Mm. Okay? okay? So just empower yourself. Learn on your own. Some people do not go to the classroom, but mm. they empower themselves. Yeah. Sometimes you see a need Maybe where you are in the community, there's a need. Some small boy, some squatter somewhere. Just take it. It's your Christian duty. Mm -hmm. Just have a project on your own. It, it takes you out of your boredom. Mm -hmm. Okay, so enhance yourself, develop yourself through the word of God, through prayer. Then God in his own wonderful way can give you the financials to support. I mean, there, so there are so many, there are thousand and one things you can do. Widows, widows, widows ill, they are sad. Some have young widows. They are young widows. Yeah. And they burn. Yeah. I mean, what do you as a as Safu mommy, do for them? Some are afraid, they say when you do that, then your husband will die first. Your husband will not All die right. first. <laughs> but it's not only old women who should be widowed. So there's a thousand and one things that you do that you can affect and impact the life around you. Bottom line, it's about time we all dirty our hands. Get our hands dirty, get involved in the work. Work in the vineyard as well. Yes. And not just be at the back. Thank you so much. And we good to know and understand that as a pastor, so you can enjoy your marriage, you can be a professional, you can have your own dream, you can be an empowered person, you can empower others, you can make an impact, and you can live your dreams. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. Members from the World Christian Town Ministries, thank you so much for coming. Women from ICGC, Discovery Temple, Kaswa, thank you for... You go for yourselves. Hey, hey, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, you are the executive from TVD, right? Yeah. Thank you so much. And is there anybody from the Presbyterian Church? Here? Yeah. No? Okay, then I'm representing the Presbyterian <laughs> Church. <laughs> we take a break. When we come back, I'll give you a bit of me. I grew up in the north and I remember when I was small, um, I think I was about the age of six, seven, I might have been in class two, class three, and um, we used to have, those times Ghana, we had this guinea worm problem. Yes. And I remember kids used to come from the Zongo area where we were living to school and they would come with this, you know, worms hanging out of their legs. And I remember I used to help them, you know, wind the worms onto sticks. <laughs> You know, just to sort of like drag the worms out. And then eventually when they would fall out, we'll all be jumping and happy, you know. So from age a very... Age six, seven. Yes, age six, seven. I worked for about five years in Holland before I came back fully okay. to, to Ghana. So the first thing I realized was um, 
the, the taking care of people here was completely different than what I was used to. And lots of people were dying this, because these were terminal ill people. Yeah. And so at some point I started saying to myself, now what did you think you were coming to do? You know, and people are dying on you and you, you can't save them. You probably are doing something wrong. You know, you are a failure, you know. It was very difficult. You took it personal. I took it very personal. So, you don't have any support, government support. <laughs> Community. No, you know, sometimes it even it gets to the point where you see a mother, for instance, with a with a child, and you are asking her to pay maybe seven CDs. That's what her bill is, and she can't pay. You know, I'm not the best person to advise you when it comes to marry. No, I'm not. Um, no, no, I don't even qualify. But there's one thing I've learned about marriage. Every marriage is different. Every marriage is different. You can be all married to people of the same profession, even of the same or twins, but your marriage may be different. So never ever compare your marriage to anyone. Of course, there are lessons to be learned. You can wish that certain things done, but your marriage is totally different. There's some good things in your marriage that the other person who seems to have it all doesn't have so whatever it is you learn to work with it you learn to work with it of course i keep saying and i'll say this anywhere and anytime if it's life-threatening wakago advise yourself quick run if it's life-threatening if it's not then i believe that um Maybe there can be some compromises. Things can turn around. Situations can turn around. So you will never know. Marriage, to me, is not the ultimate thing in life. It is beautiful. It was instituted by God. But the Bible never made it compulsory for every person to marry. So it is not the ultimate achievement. You must have your own dreams. You must have your own aspirations. You must have your own desires. You must have a greater purpose in life. Family, of course, should always come first. And in all that you do, you must factor in the family issue. The family issue. But don't die. Do not die in attempt to do it all by yourself. Sometimes you need help. But every time you need God to come in. And nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing should be the cause of your unhappiness in your marriage. No third person, no spirit, nothing. It's either your husband or your wife. But then do not allow anything else to cause you unhappiness in your marriage. Make up your mind. Do you want it or you don't want it? Can you work at it? Marriage, they say, it is naked but unashamed. Naked but unashamed. It is a bear it all kind of journey and experience. And we must learn to carry each other's load. I wish you the best of luck in marriage. Those of you getting ready to marry this Easter, yes, I know. Those of you getting ready to marry during the course of the year, the best thing you have to do is to go to God in all things. Pray like crazy before you get married. Pray like crazy when you marry. God is faithful, but he has given us wisdom. Apply it. Always apply wisdom. As always, my name remains Wahinuya Gifti Auntie. I have super crazy faith in God that he's always got me covered. But I never forget that he's giving me wisdom to apply. So help me God. Thanks for watching. See you same time next week. Bye for now.